Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the MSI N620 GT MD1 GD3 slash LP graphics card, or also better known as the MSI GeForce GT 620 1GB DDR3 card. This is not a high end solution, but more mainstream or entry level. Before I continue, I'd like to thank Forticus for providing me this product and a really recommended computer store and online shop. But now let's move on to the box. Once again, we're looking at the MSI GT 620 graphics card from Nvidia, which features 1GB DDR3 memory, DirectX 11 and HDMI plus DVI ports. And if you didn't already figure it out, this is a low profile card so it should even come with brackets allowing you to save space in your case. Apparently it should be the number one top VGA in Germany, but I'd say that's more marketing than anything else. On the back of the box you get lots of details on the features of this card and a description in different languages. But now let's open the box up and see what's inside. Alright, right on top sits the graphics card itself, but we will take a closer look at it in a moment. Underneath are the accessories like the driver CD for example, the MSI quick users guide which can come in handy if you're a beginner. Then you get more instructions on how to install the card properly. And last but not least you get two low profile brackets so that's very nice of MSI to include that. Alright here's the graphics card in an anti-static bag. I'll quickly open it up and take out the card. As you can see it comes with protection plastic pieces. Now I'll just remove that so we can take a closer look at the card alone. There we go, right off the bat I can tell you this card looks wonderful for its price performance range. Just outstanding, I never saw such a beautiful card before at this price range. You even get a little red or pink transparent fan which looks very nice too. The build quality also seems to be fairly good for this type of card. You normally wouldn't expect such a design, but hats off to MSI, I really like it. This is how it looks like on this side. Obviously there's no additional power connection required and we're looking at an aluminum heatsink which has a fairly basic design but looks great on this card. The back looks very good as well with that black PCB, it clearly makes it look stronger. Here are the four metal screws for the heatsink mounting and this card doesn't use the PCI Express 3.0 interface, instead we're still looking at PCIe 2.0. It's a single slot card by the way and you get offered one DVI, one HDMI and one VGA port. Again this card looks very beautiful for its low end performance level. But now let's get to the specifications. The MSI N620 GT MD1 GD3 slash LP graphics card has 1GB of DDR3 memory and uses the GF108 GPU. It has a core clock of 700MHz, a memory clock of 667MHz and a shader clock of 1400MHz. The DDP would be 49 watts, and that's because of the 40 nanometer architecture that is still used. DirectX 11 is fully supported and the bus width would be 64 bit. In GPU Z, the card gets detected without any problems, and again, the GF108 GPU is used, not the GK108 like reported here. And the 40 nanometer technology is used, not 28 nanometer. Again, reported badly. DirectX 11 and shader model 5.0 are fully supported, and it features 96 unified shaders, has 1 GB of DDR3 video memory, has a 64 bit bus width, and a bandwidth of 8 GB per second. At the time of this video I installed the latest drivers and nothing is overclocked. Everything is running on stock speeds. But now let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. As always, let's start with 30 mark vantage at the performance preset. And as you can see the GPU scored 2007, which of course is not very high, but for the price, well, the score is okay, but gaming can be very very tricky, but the older games should work just fine. Let's see how it does in 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset. Here my system scored P894, which is very low, so this actually almost proved gaming will be difficult. And keep in mind that this was tested with an Intel Core i5, 3570K and the score is pretty high because of the CPU alone already. Next is Cinebench release 11.5. In the OpenGL test I get 14.99 FPS on average, which is very very low and I'm not not satisfied at all with that result. But let's see if it does any better in the Unigine in Heaven Benchmark 3.0. Keep in mind that's heavy rendering. Since this graphics card supports DirectX 11, I'll go with that API. Tessellation disabled, shaders on low, AF is off, Stereo 3D of course is disabled, the AA is also off and this is running at full screen 680 by 1050. Here are the results, on average I get 10.4 FPS. 5.4 FPS on minimum and 20.9 FPS at max. I scored 261 which isn't too bad for these settings. Of course these aren't mind blowing results but you can't expect that from a GPU at this price point. Next is the last Planet 2 benchmark at 1680 by 1050 the AA is off and so the motion blur. The rest is on the lowest possible setting. In test A I get 21.3 FPS on average which is totally fine and it ranked C. Test B is a little more demanding of course and you notice that with only 18 FPS here I get the rank 
C, but really the results are ok, nothing to complain here. Time to run the Fermark benchmark at 1680 by 1050 and the AA disabled. Here I got only 150 points and believe me, this isn't a lot in general, but again I can't stop repeating that, you can't expect superior performance at this price point. I ran this test for 60 seconds and the average frame rate would be between 2 and 3. But now let's move on to the game benchmarks like Dirt Shodan at 1680 by 1050 and on low settings without AA. This is not running at ultra low, keep that in mind. The minimum frame rate I get is 24 FPS and on average 31 FPS. So that's pretty good. Now in order to get even more FPS I'll just lower the settings to ultra low, but I'll leave the rest as it is right now, including the screen resolution. Now I get a better result of 30 FPS on minimum and good 37 FPS on average. A lot of people would definitely consider this as playable, but I believe there are a lot of people out there too that need more frame rates just like I do. And this is where you start lowering the resolution. Time for Battlefield 3 at 680 by 1050 Yes, you heard right, that's pretty high, and the settings are the lowest possible option. On minimum I get 8 FPS, on average 10 FPS, and 15 FPS at max, so you will agree with me right away, that's 100% unplayable. So in order to make the gameplay just a little bit smoother, I lowered the screen resolution to 1366 by 768 but that didn't help much as you can see. On minimum I get 12 FPS, on average 17 FPS, and 25 FPS at max. So you clearly see, this card isn't meant for these demanding games like this one here. But now to the temperatures. On idle I get 31 degrees celsius which are 88 degrees fahrenheit. On low the temperature goes all the way up to 47 degrees celsius which are 117 degrees fahrenheit. The ambient room temperature was at 22 degrees celsius which are 72 degrees fahrenheit. The temperature results are very very good, I can't say anything bad here. Extremely low idle results and on load not even reaching up to the 50 degrees celsius mark, well, that's just impressive. The fan is also very silent. But now to the final test that power consumption. Like I already mentioned before, this card still uses the 40 nanometer process and so the TDP is still fairly high and I'm speaking of 49 watts. Compared to the offered performance that's not good at all, but still the power consumption could be considered as fairly low because it doesn't draw a lot of the wall anyways. The MSI N620 GT MD1 GD3 slash LP graphics card is a fairly good choice if you're a casual gamer or have an older system and you want to upgrade to a newer graphics card. Of course you don't want to spend a lot of money, so if you have an older monitor, maybe even with a lower screen resolution, well, games will not be a problem, at least not the older ones. MSI designed the card very well, it looks very beautiful and runs cool and quiet. Unfortunately, the offered performance compared to the power consumption isn't all that great, but yeah, it's not too bad. Pros are good price performance ratio, it plays games fine on low resolutions and settings, then it's very silent and has a beautiful and great MSI design. I have two things to say for the cons. First would be the power consumption is too high compared to the offered performance, and second, demanding modern games could eventually end up unplayable. Other than that, I give this graphics card an 8 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Again, I'd like to thank Fortacus for providing me this product and I'd really recommend the computer store and online shop. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.